Hi. Hi. So what do you show here? So uh, this is a, a space uh, solar or, or solar modules for outer space uh, or space qualified as you might uh, call it. <laughs> no and, problem. Uh, You're welcome. The efficiencies are very high. Like uh, under Earth conditions, 36%, which is approximately double what you find on a normal rooftop. So it's like magic. How do you do double what everybody else has? Well, um, the uh, conventional ones are made by silicon, but the silicon type uh, has a, a theoretical limit in efficiencies. Well, uh, we have this uh, triple junction compound uh, structure. Uh, it uses different material. It's the uh, indium gallium arsenide. Oh, wow. Right. And it's very light and flexible and thin. Very and expensive? Yes, very, quite expensive. And uh, so um, we're using it mainly for applications like for outer space. We have a, a Japanese equivalent of NASA. It's uh, JAXA, Japan Aerospace. Um, and uh, as you can see on screen, uh, it, it's just launched uh, on the 7th of September, and it's headed towards the moon, uh, carrying our um, solar uh, cells. Is it uh, uh, certified for Mars mission? Um, and it's <laughs> certified for space, that's what it is. <laughs> so if there's a mission going to Mars, um, there might be a possibility down the road. Cool, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you too. Okay. Can I grab your mic? Yeah. Right. Nope. Okay, I was also going to hand you my card as well, and I'm sorry, your name again was, I'm sorry, what was your name? Uh, Charbax. Nicholas? Charbax? Okay. Hi. Yeah, so. so please introduce yourself. Hi. Yeah, so my name is Ryan Cooley. I'm from our Southfield, Michigan office. I work on the automotive team. Um, so here we have our reflective exo display. So the primary applications for this are going to be outdoor signage, and you can see we also have a battery powered, and they're coming out with solar powered outdoor information terminal. So what's happening here is this is using the ambient light whether it's sunlight or just you know the lights that we have here in the in the room here, and it is reflecting instead of having a direct backlight. <clears throat> Normally, a, a display this size, a direct backlight would consume about 50 watts of power. This is only consuming about one and a half watts, so it's very low energy usage, and it's actually very visible in highlights, so you can actually see. So if you imagine normally when you're sitting at home watching your TV, uh, the sunlight comes in, you can't see the screen anymore. This is a reflective technology that's actually allowing you to see what's being displayed in the light. Like 50, so, uh, 30 times less power, kind of. Uh, but basically 50 power. times less power, correct. 50. Yeah, it's only pulling one and a half watts, correct. Wow. So <clears throat> the color display would, would reflect back about 9% of what's of the ambient light. Whereas our grayscale down over here, that would reflect back about 19%. Let's, let's have a look sure. at the grayscale. Mm -hmm. So it, it reflects twice as much? Correct, correct, because of, because of the grayscale. And then here we also have like a hybrid of these two. So you do have the reflective light using, oops, yeah. sorry. <laughs> using the ambient, but this also has a backlight for low lit areas where it can still display the image forward. So in the times when it's using the reflective technology, it's consuming very minimal power. So uh, I guess the idea could be to have those running 24-7. Correct. So if you think like train stations or if you think, you know, again, retail shops or, you know, many, many applications for it. In fact, you know, this, the, the uh, color scale over here, if you think of yourself at like a zoo, let's say, you can actually, you know, have a display with a content video of the animals being displayed and you'll actually be able to see it during nice. the daylight. Uh, so this is a brand new or you've been working on for a long time? Correct, yeah, these are still, these are still uh, concept. I don't have, I don't, I'm not entirely sure when they're gonna hit the market yet. We haven't gotten a direct answer on that. Hopefully it's so not expensive, so you can now. be all over the place. Correct, and part, part of the uh, benefit here is our IGZO technology. Um, so I think there is other reflective applications. However, uh, I think the, the energy efficiency coming from the IGZO and the refresh rate is what's, is what's kind of the, the new, the new breakthrough for, for this technology. Indium gallium. Uh, I'm sorry? Indium uh, Ixo is the indium gallium, uh, I guess, the whole thing. I can't remember, I, I can't remember either, but, but correct. Um, so, is this an e paper? Yes. Yes, so this is an e poster. That's where it's. This is using e ink. So, basically, yeah. this is also using zero power while the image is being displayed and that will be displayed indefinitely. The only time that this would actually use any power would be when you change the image, which we can do. This can connect via Bluetooth or wired connections. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for a refresh. 
So again, if you think, I think there's a lot of retail applications here, uh, movie theaters, anywhere where you got posters, you can re, you know, reload your new image, it'll change, and you're good to go. You don't have to reprint posters or anything else. Just powered on this. Powered by the solar panel, this is also part of our LCLH, uh, which we've got a gentleman here that can describe that pretty well. Um, but yes, but as I said, as the image is the there, here? Uh, it's the same thing. It's just on a different image, so we can still scroll through. So now, you know, your Kindle e-readers used to have only like the black and white. Now you, they're using six different colors, and they can come up with a basically full color spectrum. So as you saw, there was reds, oranges, yellows, blues, greens. Nice. And so it basically looks just like something that was printed. It's going to revolutionize uh, posters. Absolutely. I think there's, again, retail, I think it would be a very good one when you want to you know, change out the models and change out you know, what, what's being displayed, different configurations. All you have to do is change the image in there. And can we have a look just behind sure. here? So it's all just basically. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Sure. So yeah. we have the LCD technology, we had some plants that were a little bit older technology, and instead of decommissioning the plants, we were actually able to repurpose them to make these CH LCLH. LCLH. So it's liquid and crystal light harvesting. So using that technology, they're able to repurpose that, and this is actually two times higher than conventional solar panels. Our conversion efficiency is about 20%. So we're also able to keep the cost low because we're able to repurpose the old plants and all that old technology. Uh, my partner over here actually can probably speak a little bit more on some of these details, but uh, you have really small, really small applications. So you know, TV remotes, uh, anything that would take a, a, a small battery can basically, and it can be used in the light in the room, not necessarily just sunlight. Wow, it's, it's not expensive. Uh, well, we don't have any pricing, but from what I understand, is because we're able to use the old the old technology that it is cost effective. Yes. So in the future, my smartwatch band is going to power my smartwatch. Yes, maybe it could. That is one of the that is one of the targets for it. Yes. All right. Uh, can we walk around a little bit more, Davos? Uh, the, the other displays I would have to hand off to other gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> I've only right. been shown these here. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, that expert. <laughs> this, uh... Yeah. So some of these are pretty detailed. Uh, these glasses here, I did go through the demonstration myself. Uh, basically, and of course, the, the target is to you know shrink it, minimize it, make it not so bulky. Uh, however, when you're when you're walking around, the the glasses will sense what you're looking at, and then it will bring up data or bring up um, you know your meeting schedule or you know, car maintenance logs or different things. It'll it'll if you look at like a child's toy, say you have a baby, it'll actually activate like a baby monitor. So. Um, it's kind of analyzing, you know, the elements around you, and then giving you information for it. And there's a micro display in there. Yes. So you're doing uh, uh, augmented reality uh, with the. Uh, yeah, and for some of the more technical questions, I would have to yeah. defer to some yeah. of the experts over here. And here's more Sorry. demos about that. Uh, so the whole thing. This is, is a part of that same here. demonstration. Yeah. So this area over here is a part of the same demonstration of what they're doing with those glasses. Nice. I want to see those in the market, and not expensive. Yes. I think my wife would really like it if, uh, if you're going through yeah. the grocery store and you look at an item and maybe you could bring up you know, competitors' prices. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's what my wife would, would like the most. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, I want to get it every time I go to the supermarket. So it tells me what to take <laughs> from the shelf to have a, a healthy diet and a yes. tasty that, uh, recipes. Cor correct. It and would it bring be, up every nutritional Every space facts. should be augmented. Yes, so you could look at something and it would basically bring up a list and give you a lot more information on what you're looking at. All right. And over there is uh, uh, vacuum cleaners and uh, Some household ovens. items. Now I think something that's also kind of interesting, uh, and I would have to again defer you to uh, one of the gentlemen over here, but they're actually using AI for your olfactory sensing to actually be able to smell. Where was it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, Rashan, would you be able to explain to this gentleman here what the yeah. AI sure. yeah. interface is? Can I give you this? Here. Yeah. Wow. Right here. Okay. It's for, for his YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll try it. Thanks. So I'll try to explain from the beginning. Yeah. So this is we call AI olfactory sensor. It's because uh, it's same like human olfactory works. We, if we have some smell we send some signal to our brain 
So if brain knows exactly what the signal is, we can say it's uh, apple or orange. And we are trying to do the same thing. We try to create a smell image. So this smell image is unique to what you are measuring. So we train an AI using that image. Then we can uh, get the feedback from the AI whether it's apple or orange. That's what we are trying to do. I'd love to get the AI tell me if I smell good in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. But it, this could be a little expensive. Yeah. So, uh, expensive. yeah, that's why we are trying to implement this in the manufacturing industry first. So the manufacturing like Japanese sake industry or uh, let's say wine industry could be uh, difficult like with the fermentation process. The AI so, can recognize which wine and what year and which Of wine course, that is very easy. What we are trying to do is like the same wine, the fermentation different levels to identify. Like, you know, lots of, uh, when the fermentation process is going on, lots of off flavors are there. So we have to identify the off flavors and identify the good flavors as well. Is this how it is inside? Yeah, this is the sensor part. So we have the ionization what part here and the sensor. I'll, I'll let this gentleman sensor. explain yeah. when he's nice. ready. All right, cool. Sensor part. And this machine itself, it has a humidity controller, like environmental factors should be the same. Otherwise, the, uh, the image that we are getting could be different. And we have like uh, the controlling part, which has high voltage, high frequencies that we need to apply. So the unit itself, it's a little larger, but the sensor is actually small. Thanks a lot. You're right, welcome. The video is going to go right here. Wow. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. So let's uh, okay. let's resume just a little bit. What what okay. more should we check out here at the booth? Um, let's see. What did we? <laughs> gas analyzer. So actually, let's ask this lady over here. Hi. Excellent. How are you? So he's he's filming for his uh, YouTube channel, and he was hoping that you can kind of tell him a little bit about uh, what's being displayed over here, because I'm not yeah. too familiar with. Uh... <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, do you think, well, the trick is hold it, hold it like this. Yeah. Do I have to press something? No, it's okay. So what do we see here? So this right here is... Uh, you need to hold it up near your, your mouth. Yeah. Right here we have two models of the high-speed oven. Um, this model right here has all the controls up top and very visual right here. And then this model right here is um, more digital. It has the, the buttons that you press and it does make a noise when you do press those buttons. Um, but what makes these high-speed ovens unique is the gold carbon heater that is inside of them that does uh, provide that intense heat to speed up the process. Um, this also does have just a microwave function. It can, it can function with just being a microwave, um, but it also does have the convection as well. Is there any risk if you speed up the cooking process that it's going to face worse? Um, no, I mean, if it, it does have some smart cook programmed. Because it is like a dream, like in cartoons and stuff. You put the stuff and a few minutes later it's ready. Yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, it does, having that microwave um, inverter control does speed up the process, but the um, gold carbon heater, that intense heat, will give it that nice crisp um, great taste. All right. Thanks a lot. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I saw the video of it, uh, you know, basically doing it a third of the time, but I wasn't quite sure. I think I'll be doing it for just a moment. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't quite sure on some of those other questions. Yeah. So I didn't want to Right. Uh, thanks a lot. So driver monitoring is a lot of stuff at the booth. Is there any AK displays? Uh, so we're not really doing TVs right now. Yeah. That's uh, that's 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 short yeah. On that one. It used to be a lot. Correct. With the brand, Correct. right? Correct. But, yeah, again, I can't really speak to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, right right. Um, but if you'd like, I could ask this lady here if she can give you a demonstration of. I haven't gone through these displays, I'm not really sure if you're going to have to put it Okay. So it's up to you if you feel comfortable enough to do a quick presentation, just I mean, as you've I been just, doing with everybody. Yeah, I just have to go. Like, I just have to get nervous. Like, I don't want to get anything wrong, so it just makes me a little bit nervous every time I do huh. it. And then I might stumble through it. So. 
Okay, no problem. Can you, uh, can you hold this? And is it okay that I do this? Like, okay. Yeah. I just didn't know. Yeah. I just didn't know. You can just hold it this distance. Yeah. Like this it. distance? Yeah. All right. Hi. So Hi. What do you show here? Okay, so this is the gas decomposition uh, module here. So it can take out odors, it kind of neutralize the odor. It can also take out any harmful gases, um, keep an environment sterile, um, and also can keep food fresher longer. So, um, so these are two different two different things, right? Yeah. Yep. So this, um, so to finish up with this one, it uses photocatalytic um, technology. Yes. Um, in it, and then also you don't have to change the filter in there as well. So it has tons of different uses, um, whether it's in the medical industry, um, um, HVAC, construction. Is this the yep. technology inside? So this is the technology for the gas analyzer. So this is the IMS technology for um, over here. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so it's a gas analyzer. So it can detect uh, multi-component gases in real time. It was originally used in military technology, and soldiers carried IMS um, for te um, toxic gas detection. But they used like a radiation source as an ion source, and so obviously we don't use a radiation source now. We um, use our own technology, which you just saw over there. Yep. And neither of them are quite on the market yet, but they will be on the market. Um, I don't know 100 percent, but very soon. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I didn't know. I didn't okay. want to give a time time frame because I'm not 100 yeah. percent on it. Uh, so. It's gonna go right here. The right. video. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Whoopsie. Okay. So it was here at the Shark Boost Tour. Thanks for watching.